I have tears in my eyes. I'm so relieved. I just said, wow, out loud. You are seriously the Oprah of education. Wait, are we on Ellen? (laughs) These are just some of the comments that flooded the chat box from the more than 15,000 teachers who have already registered for my free masterclass called What They Don't Teach You in College about setting up and organizing your elementary classroom, preparing for the school year, and creating a classroom management plan that works. Over the last three years, I've refined this masterclass to give you the step-by-step information you need so you can experience that flood of relief that comes with knowing exactly how to prepare for your first classroom. And so you can answer those tricky questions from principal as you interview for your dream job. So for the first time ever, I'm making this free masterclass available on demand, but don't wait. This is an experiment. I don't know how long we're going to keep it live for. To join more than 15,000 other teachers just like you, go to drlauriefriesen.com forward slash masterclass right now. I'll also post the link for you in the show notes. Can't wait to see you there. Hey there, this is your host, Dr. Lori Friesen, and you're listening to episode number 237 of Beginning Teacher Talk. Just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there is no need for you to struggle like one. I'm dedicated to being the mentor for you that I wish I had when I first started teaching. In this podcast, we talk about all of the -the behind-the-scenes stuff about teaching you really need to know but didn't learn when you were in university. And we share the most amazing resources, tips, and strategies out there so you can become the teacher you've always dreamed of being. Let's start the show. Well, hey there. How are you? If you're listening to this episode, you might be one of those teachers who is thinking about, holy cow, I might want to transfer schools. And so this recently came up inside our Beginning Teacher Talk Facebook group. And I thought this is a really important topic that we need to talk about on the podcast. We've never talked about how to have that conversation and how to approach that conversation, which is, I think, the most important part of all of this. But before we dive in to today's topic, it's been such a long time since I have featured one of my amazing listeners and one of their reviews. So just recently, if you're part of my email list, if you're on my email list, or if you're part of our Beginning Teacher Talk Facebook group, you'll know that I surveyed all of my podcast listeners. So if you're a listener, you probably got an invitation to participate in that survey. And one of the questions I asked was, how has it been helpful for you, the podcast? And then just after that, I got some amazing reviews from some of you teachers all around the world. It just completely warms my heart when I know that what I do in my little podcasting studio, I call it a studio, it's really just my office. (laughs) When I am speaking to myself, it feels like a lot of the time, I try to imagine I'm speaking to one of you because I do feel like I am genuinely having a conversation with you, but it's kind of weird because it's one-sided. And it's so nice to hear back from you sometimes. It really is affirming. It really does help me to keep going. So thank you so much for all of the amazing reviews and comments that you've sent in about the podcast. And I want to share one of these reviews today because it just touched my heart so much. This is from Jenna B. Teach from Spain. I love that name. And she gave the podcast a five-star review and she said, yes, yes, yes. We have one of the most important jobs in the world as teachers. The work is so important and fulfilling that it's easy for me to go overboard and never turn off my teacher mind. Lori's podcast was sent from heaven at a time when I needed it most. It's like a therapy session when my teacher anxiety takes overdrive. I'm a teacher, but also a human with other interests and desires. And many episodes help me remember to set my own boundaries. This podcast is also a blessing when I learn tools and tricks that I simply could not have even thought of on my own and make my teaching fun and efficient. I love this podcast and it literally feels like teacher church in the way I feel heard, cared for, and given so many tools to do this noble but exhausting job of being an educator. I've been in education for eight years and still find these episodes in Facebook community super helpful and relevant. Isn't that beautiful? I am so happy to be a part of your world, Jenna. I understand. I fully resonate with what you've 
described in this review about your experience of being a teacher and how challenging it is to maintain that work-life balance. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for being a listener, for being a part of our community. And Jenna, if you're listening, be sure to reach out to me on Messenger on Facebook because I want to thank you by giving you a $25 Amazon gift card for taking the time to write such a beautiful review. And if you're listening and you haven't left a review yet, leaving a review is the way that we communicate with Apple Podcasts to let them know this is valuable content for other teachers, especially new teachers. I mean, Jenna isn't a new teacher. She's been teaching for eight years. But for other teachers who want help and support, this is the best way that we can help get the word out there is when you leave a review. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And if you do leave a review, you too could be featured on the podcast and be given a $25 Amazon gift card as well. All right, let's dive in and talk about this week's podcast episode because we're going to talk all about having those hard conversations with your admin and with your coworkers about transferring schools. Now, of course, these conversations can be really uncomfortable. It may be hard to find the right words to say what you need to to everyone. And there's going to be a lot of emotions that are going to come up for you during this time. You're going to be partially really excited about the possibilities ahead. You might be feeling a little nervous a little scared, a little overwhelmed with everything you have in front of you, especially if it involves also moving. And it can be really hard to know the appropriate and professional way to best navigate this time. So you want to make this transition as positively and smoothly as possible so that you can leave on good terms. And so you can ask your admin and your fellow teachers for reference letters for your new, your new district and your new school. So this episode was actually inspired by a member of the Beginning Teacher Talk Facebook group who was asking for advice about when to talk to her admin about leaving her school and interviewing at other schools. And she was looking for advice about timing and what is the most respectful and professional thing to do in this situation. So if you are in this situation, please know you're not alone. That need or that desire to transfer schools comes up more often than you might think. It might be because you are genuinely unhappy at the school you're currently at for a variety of different reasons, or it could be because your your husband, your wife, or your partner just got a job somewhere else, so your family has decided that this is the right time to move for your family. So if you aren't sure how to talk to your admin and your colleagues, it's totally normal to feel some anxiety and to worry about the conversations and about them not turning out in a positive way. And because there could be hurt feelings, right? That could damage relationships and the possibility of not so hot reference letters if we don't handle the situation professionally. So we're going to talk today about what you can do to ensure that it goes as smoothly and positively as possible. And by the way, if you are in this position and you are ready to interview at different schools or you're, you're needing to interview at different schools, be sure to download my new freebie. It's 24 elementary teacher interview prep cards. So this is a free resource. It's really appropriate for kindergarten to fifth grade teachers. And it includes the 24 most common questions that new teachers get asked during interviews. It'll help you get interview ready almost in a weekend by just printing and adding your bullet point answers so that it, you can practice for your interview simply and easily. And I'm also going to give you some super valuable tips and strategies for answering these questions to help you stand out from the crowd. And by the way, when you download that freebie, you're going to get some other surprises that I cannot wait for you to discover. It's just so much fun to spoil your rotten. So I'll link to where you can download this freebie in the show notes for this episode, episode number 237, or you can go directly to drlauriefriesen.com forward slash interview prep cards. Again, we'll link to that for you in the show notes for this episode. All right, my friends, let's dive in and talk about how to talk to your admin, to your coworkers, and even to your students about when you want to or need to transfer schools. So the first thing you need to do is to make sure that you've gathered all of the information that you need, that you've figured out a plan with your family and ensure that you've gotten some clarity around exactly why you want to transfer schools if you don't already know. So this is a little bit more complex than it sounds. So before you talk with your admin and you share, you'll want to take a little bit of time to really get your thoughts together. So even if you want to leave because you really don't like the school or the administration and you've decided this is just not a good fit for you, 
I encourage you to be very careful about speaking badly about anyone at your school or blaming anyone around you for your unhappiness at that school. Even if it has not been a positive experience for you, the surest way to secure a position at a school you do want is to exit your current position at your school in the most graceful and professional way possible. So I encourage you to take some time to get some clarity around professional and personal reasons why this is the best move for you and for your family, and to practice explaining this in a way that is respectful and yet still honest. So for example, if you're thinking of changing schools because you really need more supportive admin or a more inclusive grade level team, and these are some of the most common reasons, by the way, that I see teachers deciding that they want to transfer schools, even though it's very tempting to fill your mind with all the negatives, I really encourage you to focus instead on thinking about and getting clarity around things that do not have as much to do with your admin or your coworkers. So for example, maybe you can let your admin and coworkers know that you're looking for a school that is closer to where you live, or maybe is closer to your child's daycare, or maybe closer to where your partner works if you're sharing a car with them. If you really would like to teach a different grade level, and that opportunity is not available at your current school, that's another valid reason to let your admin and coworkers know that you're looking for a change. Or maybe you really want to become a subject specialist, and you want to teach music or art because that was your major in university, you can emphasize those points as reasons for why you would like a change. The point is to do some preliminary thinking and get clarity around how you will talk about your desire to transfer that doesn't imply that you have any judgment or negativity around your current school, your admin, or your coworkers. Like I said, even if it hasn't been pleasant, do your best to focus on other things and highlight those reasons for wanting a change because this will help to make your transition with far more grace and professionalism than if you haven't thought through your reasons outside of personal relationships at the school. Also, you might want to decide if you want to have a position lined up and secured before talking to your admin and colleagues. So one of the questions I get asked the most is whether or not you should tell your admin that you're looking for a new position. And my advice is always that honesty is the best policy. If you're shopping around at other schools and you're going for interviews and you have not told your principal, there is a very good chance that you will not be able to get a positive reference letter from your current admin. So just a warning, like you have to be very careful here. You do not want your admin finding out from another principal that you've interviewed at that school and then be in a very awkward position at your current school. So most schools will post job positions in January or February for the following school year, and many will start hiring later in the spring. So that would be an ideal time to inform your admin that they should schedule interviews for your role and giving your admin plenty of opportunity to fill your position before the end of the school year is one of the kindest, most respectful things you can do and will greatly impact your ability to get positive reference letters as a result. So second, once you've decided that you want to transfer schools in a district transfer or out of district transfer, whatever you decide, and you have clarity around why you want to do so, and you can talk about it in a way that does not insult anyone at your current school, the first thing I encourage you to do is to talk to your admin about it. So this will be your first step as you want to be very respectful of their input and the amount of work that they're going to need to do to fill your position after you leave. Also, your admin might have advice or feedback about this move that you didn't even think about, and you want to give them that opportunity to share that with you. The grass often seems greener on the other side, right? It always seems so much better at another school, but they may know things about the school or district that you don't even realize may not be so great that you think you want to move to, and it might inform your decision moving forward. It's also a very professional and classy idea to thank your admin for supporting you and guiding you at school in whatever ways they've done so. Even if you feel like there's a lot more they could have done, even if you're leaving in part because you've not been happy with the lack of support from them. Do the preliminary work of finding something positive about the way they brought you on and have supported you when you first began or throughout the year. 
the reality is they took a chance on you as well. Like they brought you into the school. So start thinking about how could you thank them for something genuinely and feel good about it. Even if there's been tension or conflict with you and your admin, this step still has to be done and done so respectfully. And it'll be helpful for your admin to hear why you're wanting to transfer schools so they can help improve what they do, the school or the team that you are on and anything else that might need improvement. But important things to remember that it's important to be open and honest with your admin in as professional a way as possible about things that you think need to be improved or problems that you saw but also on the flip side, things that you thought worked really well and that you appreciate about the school and about their leadership because they may have a lot of questions for you about why you're leaving. So again, before, as I was going back to what I mentioned previously, practice talking about why you want to leave in a clear and positive way so that this conversation doesn't become negative and so you can protect this professional relationship and leave on a positive note. And remember, they're going to ask you a lot of questions potentially about why you're leaving. So practicing that in advance is really important. So the next step is once you've talked with your admin, you can ask if they'd be willing to write you a reference letter. So you will most likely need these letters to interview and apply at other schools. And it won't be a surprise to your admin that you're asking for this, even if you're feeling awkward about asking for a reference letter, because asking for a reference letter is very appropriate for this type of situation, and they will be expecting you to ask. So I would suggest getting reference letters from your principal or principals, if you have more than one, the assistant principal, and members of your grade level team, and also other staff members that you've worked with that you have had a great relationship with that can speak to your professionalism and competency. But be patient with these people. Please don't try to rush them in getting you those letters. It's going to take them a bit of time to write them. So give them some time. I would give them at least a few weeks. And don't be afraid to give them gentle reminders along the way because we all know how busy teachers are, especially, but everyone at a school incredibly busy people, right? Now, if you feel comfortable doing so, you could even offer to write a draft of these letters for your team members so they can just edit and tweak them rather than having to start from scratch. And there are also a ton of sample reference letters you can get access to online just to get ideas or to help your coworkers get started. So if you just Google sample reference letters for teachers, you'd be surprised by how many great examples come up that you can adapt or get ideas from. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is to inform the rest of the staff that you're going to be transferring to a different school or district. So depending on how comfortable you feel and if there's an opportunity to do so, you could let the staff know at a staff meeting or at a time when the whole staff is together or even at a grade level team meeting first and then to a staff meeting. But once you share it with one or two people, everybody knows anyway. So it's kind of better if you do it as a whole staff together. Now, another option you have is to just send an email out to the staff, letting them know about your future plans. But here's the thing, you are in control of this. You can choose to give them as little or as much information about your decision. Whatever is the most comfortable for you is what you should do. And just expect, though, that people will have questions. They'll have comments about your decision, which is, again, why I really encourage you to do that preliminary thinking work of getting clarity around what you will decide will be the main reason or reasons for making this move. And stay clear on that. Stay focused on that. And remember, even though this can be hard, stick to the boundaries of what feels comfortable for you. You only have to answer or talk about things that you choose to talk about and give as much detail as you feel comfortable giving. I remember when I decided to leave the classroom to teach at the university, I got asked so many questions about why. And the reality is that it didn't have anything to do with the school or the staff. I loved my school. I loved my grade level team. I didn't quite feel comfortable there because everyone was so much more experienced than I was, but I still loved my coworkers and I loved teaching second grade. I just really enjoyed that school. It was an amazing school, but I was just ready for a new challenge. So everyone has their own reasons for wanting to transfer or leave and you reserve the right to share as little or as much as you would like to. So don't be pushed into sharing more than you want to. And then finally, when you are ready, this is the hardest part in my opinion, you will want to share this news with your students. So again, this is the hardest part, or at least it was for me. I remember when I told my students that I was planning to leave the school, they took it really personally. I was kind of surprised. They were really hurt and upset that we weren't going to see each other anymore because I wasn't just leaving the 
the grade level, I was literally leaving the school. So what we did was we hatched a plan to have summer picnics. And that lasted for a few years. Like we actually did this for a few years. So anyone who wanted to join us would meet at the school playground in the summer on this under this huge old tree we had there. And everyone would bring snacks so we could just hang out for a little while and have lunch together and catch up. I would just email all the parents and say, hey, I'm going to have lunch here at this time. If any of your kiddos want to come join me, they're welcome to. So leaving your school doesn't necessarily mean that you have to say goodbye. And in today's world of technology, of course, I'm still friends with many of my students from 20 years ago on Facebook and Instagram. So there's other ways to stay connected as well. But you can choose how you want to share this with your students and how you're going to explain it to them. And again, you can give as much or as little detail as you want to. They're going to have a lot of questions. They may have a lot of emotions, especially if you're teaching younger students. It tends to be really emotional for them because they get really attached. They might be really excited for you or they might still feel really sad or a combination of both. You're going to get reactions for a while. So I would make sure that you let your students know as early as possible so that you can talk about it, you know, for the rest of the school year and they can kind of get accustomed to this news. But be sure to keep things professional in what you're sharing with your students so you don't call out any students or any teachers or any admin because the students really don't need that information, right? Again, keep things professional and classy And again, give your students lots of time to ask questions and to share their emotions with you and with their classmates. All right. So just a quick recap. We talked about five different steps that I recommend. And so if you're thinking of transferring to another school, number one, the first thing that you need to do is make sure you've gathered all the information you need, figured out a plan with your family, and ensure you've gotten some clarity around exactly why you want to transfer schools, if you don't already know. So remember, focus on keeping your reasons positive and avoid speaking negatively about anyone at your school. We're going to be classy here, right? Second, once you've decided that you want to transfer schools in a district transfer or out of district transfer, and you have clarity around why you want to do so and can talk about it in a way that does not insult anyone at your current school, the first thing you should do is talk to your admin about it. So number three, once you've talked with your admin, ask if they'd be willing to write you a reference letter. I know it feels a little bit awkward, but they are ready for this. They expect this. And also be ready to talk about why you're leaving with your admin. So you have to be very clear about that and make sure that you can answer questions around it in a positive way. The fourth thing is to inform the rest of the staff that you'll be transferring to a different school or district. And number five, when you're ready, you'll want to share this news with your students and let them have time to digest the news and to ask you lots of questions. All right, my friends, remember, go ahead and download that new freebie that I have for you. If you are in the process of interviewing at a new school, the 24 elementary teacher interview prep cards, I will be sure to link to that freebie in the show notes for you. Again, it's just drlauriefriesen.com forward slash interview prep cards. And if you haven't already joined our Beginning Teacher Talk Facebook group, come join us in there because we are always having these kinds of conversations and teachers are helping each other as they make these transitions. All right, my friends, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. And until next time, remember, just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there is no need for you to struggle like one. Bye for now.